Good morning, welcome or welcome back. My name is Sheree and today's video is going to be 24 books I want to read in 2024. Last year I did a list of 23 books I wanted to read in 2023 and I maybe read one of them, zero. I don't, to be honest, I don't remember. It's kind of crazy though because I finally read 100 books and yet the 23 that I picked were not, at least one of them was not on what I read. So I'm thinking maybe if I film a video, I can look back at it and it can spring other videos and maybe it'll keep me to my list. And all of the books are books that I own because my goal is to get through, to read at least 75 books from my own collection this year because my I have three basically five shelves of like unread books and so my goal is to get through a lot of my books this year so a lot of these books are books that I acquired last year that I didn't necessarily get around to and some of them are books that I've had on my shelves for a while and I felt like if they're sitting on my shelf like I should be reading them and I obviously wanted to read them at one point in time so I kind of want to give new life to books that I've had for a while. Let's just get into the list. So the first book I want to read is Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor. I remember when I bought this book because I was really going back and forth about buying a physical copy because I was trying to do like a ban at that time book buying ban and I was like no don't buy a copy it's fine and then somehow I ended up buying a copy and I don't remember I don't remember how or why um but I have high hopes for this book because it is supposed to be kind of like a mystery and it seems fast-paced it seems like there's a lot of dialogue I love a book with a lot of dialogue so I'm really excited to read this and I'm hoping it lives up to my expect expectation I love the like time period it's set in also it says this is the age of vice where pleasure and power are everything and the family ties that bind can also kill it just sounds like such a fun new deli 3 a.m it just a, spe a speeding mercedes jumps the curb and in the blink of an eye five people are dead like what you know it just sounds like such a fun time so i'm really excited to read that it's huge also which is another reason why i'm like don't buy a physical copy just read it on your kindle and again i go through phases so i read the first six books of the year i read were on my kindle and then now i'm kind of like i'm missing the feel of like physical book but depending on how it is like while i'm reading the books i might switch to kindle we'll see i'm sure i'll go back to like my kindle soon but right now physical books next book i want to read is Babel by rf kuang i there's two books by rf kuang on this list i also have yellow face so i want to read Babel and yellow face i'm actually in the middle of yellow face right now i'm 94 pages in and kind of loving it and it's really accessible to me like her writing is very readable and i was nervous about that because like then you then she has like books like this and the poppy war which is a series of hers i want to read this year so i'm a little bit nervous um because even the font is different on <laughs> In yellow face but it's clear that she has range and i appreciate that appreciate that i would love to read this book this year honestly i would love to just read all her books like i just want to read yellow face want to read babble and i want to read poppy war i just would love to read all her books and maybe that'll be another video so babble is next book that's on the list and then this is actually the last book on the list because i alphabetized them but we're here now so i also want to read yellow face Chain Gang All Stars. I've no, wow, a lot of these books are read with Jenna. Oh, no, 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 sorry. This is read with Jenna. There's another, a couple of them are, sorry. But um, Chain Gang All Stars, I've heard great things about this book. I tried to start reading this book a while ago, but I just wasn't like in the mood for it. I wasn't like, it wasn't my vibe at the time. This might be one that I just grab on my Kindle. I like the weight of the pages, it's very nice. But I've heard nothing but good things about this book and it's just like about the top women, the, the line for it, top women gladiators 
fighting for their freedom within a depraved private prison system not so far removed from America's own. That is crazy to me. And I, it just, I cannot wait. I, I hope, I also hope this one lives up to my expectations. The next book I want to read is called The Beasting by Paul Murray. So this book came out last year and I could not find it anywhere because it was winning all these awards, it was getting nominated, and she's a, she's a thick one. But I looked for it everywhere and I finally found a copy and I was like, I must read this. If it's winning all these awards and it's everywhere, it's like, I need to see what the hype is, especially for like a literary fiction book. I don't necessarily read literary fiction very often, but a lot of these books I'm realizing, realizing are literary fiction and I, I, I want to expand my horizons and just expand the genres that I read. And so I feel like a lot of the books I picked are literary fiction because I want to try something new this year. I finally got my hand on, hands on a copy. I don't know why I big buy these like huge hardcovers knowing damn well that I am going to hate holding this up and reading it because it's so heavy. So. I don't know what it is. There's something about having the physical book, but I feel like when the time comes to, for me to read this, I'm going to want to just read it on my Kindle. But I don't know. Now I have the physical book, so we'll see. So the next book I want to read is Black Buck. It gives me, and I could be completely wrong, but I feel like it's a black person who works in like corporate right? Yeah, but Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of a Midtown office building, hanging out with his girlfriend, blah, 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 blah. Then he gets to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor after enduring a hell week of training. Darren, and only, the only black person in the company, reimagines himself as Buck, a ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. So for me, it gives sorry to bother you vibes. That's what this book gives. And I love that movie, Sorry to Bother You. It is so weird. And about black people in corporate America and how they have to code switch. And it's very interesting and it takes a weird turn, I will say, but that gives this vibes. That, this gives vi those vibes. And I have been wanting to read this for so long. So I need to do that. So I'm putting it on the list. Then I wanna read Big Swiss. I bought it last year. I haven't read a lot of reviews about it. We'll see how it goes. The Death of Yvette Gorgi. I, I've heard nothing but good things about this book. So I need to read it. I've had it for a while. A quick at Amezi wrote, uh, you made a fool of death with your beauty. And that is one of my favorite romance books of all time. And knowing that a quick at Amezi has such range and has written such different genres, has written in almost all the genres. And they're coming out with a new book this year. I need to read this. I need to read everything that a quick at Amezi writes. Honestly, their writing is, so beautiful. When I read You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. It has some of the most beautifully written lines I have ever read. That book is annotated and highlighted up because it's so beautiful. And I cannot wait to dive into this. I've heard such good things about this book. I'm so excited. And I feel like it's gonna rip me apart just like You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty did. I also wanna read this On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Ocean Vuong. I've heard, again, nothing but great things about this book. And people say that this reads like poetry. That's how beautiful it is. I'm a sucker for beautiful writing. Not flowery writing, beautiful writing. I don't know if there's a difference, but to me, it does feel like there's a difference. But for instance, I think A Little Life is some of the most beautiful writing same with a, a, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. Beautiful writing, but none of it's flowery. I hope that makes sense. And I've heard that this is beautiful also, so I cannot wait. I can't believe I haven't read this book yet, honestly. So it goes on the list. So I also want to read Demon Copperhead. Uh, this was, okay, funny story about this book. I got the UK version because look, look at the gold foiling. It's beautiful. It's a paperback. I just, you hear that? I love that sound. I love that sound. And I ordered this because it got nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And I wanted to read all of those books. Did I end up doing that? No, but I wanted to. And 
this book, I ordered it before the winner was announced. I ordered it as soon as the nominations were announced. And so she, this book won. Okay, this won that prize or whatever. But when I ordered this book, it says already winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction. Which I thought was a little interesting. It did win. But I, again, I ordered this before, before that nomination was announced. Before the winner. Before she was announced the winner. So, again, not sure if she won before or what. But they predict the future. <laughs> really. They really just predicted the future. So I also want to read In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. This is a love story. A romance between two men set during... World War One. Now, I'm not a big historical fiction girly, but I am a big romance girly. And there's something about literary fiction romance, like literary romance. It's forbidden, okay? And it's during World War One, historical romance. And I've heard really great things about this. And I'm so excited. It's just like an epic tale of both the devastating tragedy of war and the forbidden romance that blooms in its grip. And this is someone's debut. I'm really excited. Again, I hope it lives up to my expectations. And that's what makes me nervous about reading books that are popular and supposed to be good. What if I don't like them? It's okay, but I want to like them. Put this in the video now. I've read it, we're moving on. It's part of the list, but we're moving on. I also want to read The Invisible Life of Adelie Rue. I have not read this and I've heard some mixed things about this. I've heard it's really slow, heard that the ending is really beautiful and some people love this book. Some people are like, it's very meh. So I need to make my own opinion on it, obviously. I've had this book for a while though. And uh, this is one of those books where it's like, you've had it for a long time and like you need to read it you need to form your own opinion on it and just move on <laughs> 11 more books that are on the list next book small worlds i read open water again open water to me literary romance again some of the most beautiful writing i have ever read that book is just the blurb for it, it's just like stunning masterly gorgeous and lyrical that is open water so when i heard that Caleb was coming out with a second book called Small Worlds. I was like fiending to get this on the first day. But again, I'm not good at reading books right when they come out. I need some time to work up. Like I have so much excitement and then I get it and I'm like, okay, now I have it. Now I can move on. But then I don't actually read it. So that's a whole different, you know, thing like collecting and reading the books, two very different activities. So it's time for me to read Small Worlds. Um, again, I get nervous. I love his first book so much. I wanna love this one too. I have some questions for you. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. I got it last year. I haven't read The Great Believers, but I've heard great things about The Great Believers. So I would like to read this one. I have heard mixed things about it, but a successful film, film professor and podcaster, Bodie Kane, is content to forget her past. And I think it's like a mystery, right? A stirring investigation into collective memory and a deeply felt examination of one woman's reckoning with her past with a transfixing mystery at its heart. Timely, hypnotic, and populated with a cast of unforgettable characters. Compulsive page term. I'm in. I am in. Sounds great. Pineapple Street. I've heard such good things about this book that it's just like fun and it's just about rich people being rich behaving possibly, possibly badly. Uh, it says it's vibrant and hilarious. I honestly love to read about rich people like behaving badly or just being rich and stupid and I just love it. And um, it seems like it's just gonna be fun. Like all vibes, no thoughts, just vibes. And I'm, I kind of love that for me. I love this cover too. Like that was really one of the main things that drew me to the book, this cover. It's absolutely stunning. Vampires of El Norte. I heard at the heart of this book, there's a romance. And that for me, also the cover is gorgeous, but Vampires of El Norte, like the way I'm saying it, Vampires of El Norte, sorry. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. One, vampires. Okay. Two, a Latinx story. Three, a romance. I'm in. I'm in. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. I also heard good things about The Hacienda, which is um, Isabel Cañas' first book. I want to do a whole... I'm watching... This is a tangent, but I'm watching The Vampire Diaries again for the third time, I guess. Two and a, two and a half time. Because the first time I watched it, I didn't finish it like when it was airing on TV. But a couple years ago, I watched the whole thing straight through. And I'm watching it again. I don't know why. Actually, I know why. It's so I can get to season five. Yes, I know I could just jump to season five, but I don't want to do that. I want to watch the whole thing. So it's making me like want to read books about vampires again because I love vampires. I love a vampire story, honestly. Did you really think this book wasn't going to be on the list considering that I haven't read it yet? I haven't read anything by James McBride and I'm ashamed to say that because I have um, a couple of his other books and this book was also on a bunch of lists, won a bunch of prizes and i've heard such good things about it this is so funny this guy looks like my friend's dad not gonna lie <laughs> but i've heard such good things i'm so excited to read it a novel about small town secrets and the people who keep them i there's something about a small town reading about a small town watching a small town like gilmore girls or even 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 vampire diaries like they live in this kind of town that's like has its lore there's something about reading about like a small town and this is that like a small town with secrets even like that book under the dome like that's a weird small town and they somehow a dome forms on under them that's weird but like there's something to me about reading about this like small town and they all know each other they all have their secrets i'm excited to read this book i i can't like i don't know i can't say anything else i'm just so excited to read this book i have some older books that have been on my shelf for a while that it's like girl you need to just you need to read them because um you need to read them and you need to make your own opinion on them and that's that's how it's the same way i feel about movies i need to watch it and make my own opinion on it and i need to read these books and make my own opinion on them first one if we were villains by ml rio i'm a huge shakespeare nerd okay i have a shakespeare tattoo well a quote from hamlet i think i'm really gonna just eat this up because of all the shakespeare references and all that like for instance the other day i watched anyone but you which is i guess a retelling of a midsummer midsummer's night's dream and i actually thought it was like quite funny and it was like quite entertaining that's what i went in for i went in for entertainment purposes only and i love like shakespeare retellings like i love the ogo that came out in the 90s i love the 90s or the 2000s i'm not sure i love she's the man so great we love 10 things i hate about you so i just i just really appreciate a good like shakespeare reference or whatever and this book i believe is filled with it right i honestly can't wait like i honestly can't wait so that's another book that's like been on my shelf forever and i need to read it and going along with that book i feel like these two books kind of get paired together but a Se the secret history by donna tart this to me gives me saltburn vibes when i watched saltburn i felt like i needed to go and read this right away and obviously i haven't read it yet but i feel like this book and the talent of mr ripley are books that give saltburn vibes and i don't know if that's true or not because i haven't read either of them but that's something that i would like to explore because I think Saltburn is quite entertaining and I know some people don't but I think it's quite entertaining and we love Barry. This is a Barry household here okay. So I would love to read books that have like Saltburn vibes and I need to I feel like I want to explore that more. It's on Amazon right now if you if people want to watch it or need to watch it and I probably will be watching it again but I feel like this could have Saltburn vibes and I just need to read this book like I need to get, I need to start my dark academia, like, phase. That's what I need to do. This one's kind of like random and it's coming out of the blue, but I want to read The Shadow of the Wind. <laughs> this is one of my friend's like favorite books and I've had a copy for a while. I've heard that it's really good and I think it's just time. I feel like I would also like eat this book up. It feels like a book for me and it just sounds amazing and look at my old copy it's not that old i think this this version came out sorry i'm a little sick right now so i feel like i'm all sniffly but i believe this this version came out 
in 20... 2004. But the book was originally published in 2001. But my copy I got from a used bookstore. I had, I think, another copy. I think I, have a, I had a hardcover copy, but I wanted, like, a little paperback copy. And it cost me $10. Yeah, I got it from this, this store called Codex, which is... Um, near my theater, near my job. So yeah, this is something I wanna to read too. I also wanna read Trust. I think this won like the Pulitzer or something. It won an award last year and I heard it's a very different kind of novel in the way that it's formatted. And I think it tells like three different stories and it's an unparalleled novel about money, power, intimacy, and perception. So I feel like this is gonna be, it says a literary puzzle. It, I feel like this book is going to challenge me in a really good way. And I feel like that's what I want this year. And I love this cover. I've been wanting to read this book for a long time. For, I guess, for as long as it's been out. Uh, I mean, it came out in 2022. So I guess since 2022, I've been wanting to read it. But again, I think it's going to challenge me. And I think that that's kind of what I need. It's kind of what I want. I also want to read Real Life uh, by Brandon Taylor. I want to read everything by him. I've never read anything by him. And... I really, really want to. I feel like I would really like his writing. And it's just about like, this is about like a circle of friends. His other book also is about a group of friends. Introverted young man from Al Alabama, Albania, Alabama, black and queer. He has left behind his family without escaping the long shadows of his childhood. For reasons of self-preservation, Wallace has enforced a wary distance, even within his own circle of friends. Some dating each other, some dating women, some feigning straightness. But over the course of a late summer weekend, a series of confrontations with colleagues and an unexpected encounter with an ostensibly straight white classmate conspired to fracture his defenses while exposing long hidden currents of hostility and desire within their community. Sounds challenging, sounds great, sounds engaging, and I honestly can't wait. I cannot wait. I have this one by him. I don't think I have another book by him, but I believe he has three books out three or four books out and I have a feeling I'm going to want to read all of them. Last but certainly not least, Song of Achilles. <gasps> I know, I know, I am years late and that's fine, that's totally fine. I have never really been drawn to like mythology retellings, mythological retellings. This book came out in 2012, wow. But I got this book in 2021. Wow, this book has been out for a long time. Wow. I did not realize that this book came out in 2012. That's crazy. Especially because it blew up again on TikTok like two or three years ago. The power of TikTok, it's kind of crazy. I've heard this is also heartbreaking. This could spark my love for mythological retellings. So I want to form my own opinion about this book and I want to give it a chance. So that is all 24 books that I would like to read next year. Hopefully that was actually 24. I wrote an entire list down and I'm pretty sure I grabbed, like I'm pretty sure I grabbed all the books on the list. If I didn't, oh well, but I'm excited for this list. I've already started reading some of them. So that like makes me happy and makes me feel like, okay, you're actually gonna read these this year. But if you made it this far in the video, let me know if you've read any of these and if you're excited to read any of them. Um, let me know if you'd wanna see any like certain videos with them because I don't think I'll put all of them in videos, but there are definitely a couple that I'm already like, the wheels are turning for videos on them. But um, don't forget to follow me on TikTok. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And please subscribe to the channel because this is fun and I love talking about books and I'm realizing I don't have a lot of people in my real life to talk about books with. <laughs> so until next time,